All right, just coming out to do some work on the three sisters' beds. The squash plant that required so much effort to get the squash bugs and squash vine borers under control is doing well. I've been able to harvest several little squash from it. Got more new ones coming on. I did get a few more squash bugs off of it today. I've got new squash, yellow squash coming along. Pole beans are growing nicely. Most of the corn plants are now way above my head. Some are 10 to 12 feet tall already. I've also got the sugar pumpkins coming along. I transplanted some of them today. Here's one that I transplanted. I'm gonna have to water it even though we're getting a lot of rain. Make sure that it stays alive. So that one's doing a little puny, but all the rest are doing very well. And even some of the pole beans are getting up close to six feet in height up these corn plants as well. I'm currently standing in the second bed. It's also got a nice germination rate on the sugar pumpkins. The zucchini uh, thinned back a lot of the leaves today. I should have filmed what I did. I didn't think about it until later. One of the things that you have to watch out for with all of the squash family are powdery mildew. And despite having a lot of rain this spring, none of my squash, uh, when I say squash, I mean the yellow squash, zucchini, or pumpkins have shown any signs of it. You can use a prophylactic spray with baking soda, but I haven't done that yet this year because it's doing so well. But one of the things that can be done to prevent powdery mildew is to thin the leaves back. This plant did have leaves coming all the way out into the walkway here, and I just came along here and cut them way back. You can see some of the stubs of some of the leaves that I cut off. I'm going to also put some more compost on top of here so that I can get some more rooting along that vine. Uh, I have not had many, if any, pest problems with this first zucchini though, which has been nice. This is the younger one that I planted. That was another reason I thinned these leaves back is because I could see that the leaves of this older plant were shading this one. It really hasn't gotten enough sunlight, uh, which it should get quite a bit now. And then again, along here, I have more of the sugar pumpkins that are coming up and doing nicely. These are gonna have more of a struggle to get sunlight being in this third bed, which is the furthest north but I'm optimistic that they're gonna do well. In retrospect, I probably should have planted them sooner than I did. I uh, probably waited too long. I was just trying to time the harvest where I would be getting pumpkins late summer, early fall. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about today was mulching in these beds. Uh, there's this idea that once you put down mulch that you have no weeds, and that's really not the case. You still, even with mulch, you'll get the occasional weed. And generally what I just do is pull them out and just leave them on top of the soil so that they will break down and become a part of the mulch. And then also throughout the season, I will also go along and keep applying more leaves. Uh, Ruth Stout, who came up with the Ruth Stout method of gardening, which is where heavy mulch is applied to the beds, is famous for saying when asked, how much mulch do you apply to your beds? Her answer was more and that is so true especially once the weeds start propagating and you start getting these bare spots it's not really a bare spot there but if you look along here you'll see them like here there's a bare spot in the soil where you're getting down to compost so that can start to propagate weeds and as these leaves and wood chips break down they become a good growing media for weeds so it's important to keep weeding and applying mulch during the season. Here's a really good example between my two rows here. I've got this fairly bare area of just compost where these clover are growing. So I'm just going to pull them up and then I pretty much keep leaves from my yard handy. And I've got this garden cart full. So you just take some and just put it over the top. And I'm going to put it on thicker than that. But that's basically all that you do to keep the weeds down and keep the soil and compost covered. 
And I also want to show right here on the edge of my garden, I see so many people, especially from the south, complain about Bermuda grass. And justifiably so. It is impossible to kill. But what I have found is that it can be managed by the same principle of what Ruth Stout called more. This is Bermuda grass right here. And what it does is it will just start growing through these wood chips themselves. I just uh, pulled it back some. That's why this is turned over here. But all that you have to do is just pull this back and I also weed eat it. But then instead of trying to fight it, just keep covering it up. Get more cardboard, put the cardboard down to this edge, pile on more wood chips, and it will stay out of the garden. It's a never ending battle. It's something that will never completely be controlled, but it can be managed. Here's some right here. It's growing out into the bed. More here. This is where I put down cardboard that I didn't put enough mulch around. And what I'm going to do today is come along here and weed eat and pull up these that are trying to grow over the top of my cardboard and mulch and mulch it all again. So that's why Ruth Stout said the answer to the problem is just add more. Just keep piling on the compost and mulch. Mm -hmm. 